If you're like me and you love the skeleton key, but you don't know much about hoodoo, then sit back as I try to explain some of the creepy images from the movie. Hello friends and family members, I'm McGann and welcome to the Fangirl, a series getting creepier by the week. The Skeleton Key is one of those rare movies that genuinely surprised me at the end. If you haven't seen the movie, it's about a lawyer named Luke who's working out in nowhere Louisiana and he hires this hospice nurse, Carolyn, to watch over this elderly couple where the husband just had a stroke so he can't speak or move. As the movie progresses, Carolyn learns that the house used to be managed by a pair of two-headed doctors, Papa Justify and Mama Cecile. And if you are curious, a two-headed doctor is a way to describe a hoodoo master. While Papa Justify and Mama Cecile did all this crazy stuff that the house owner Thorpe never knew about. But Mama and Papa overstepped one day when they were caught teaching Thorpe's children magic. And that landed the couple lynched and burned to death. The current day homeowner, Violet, expresses to Caroline that the house is now haunted by Mama and Papa. And as the movie goes on, Caroline tries to learn more and more about hoodoo to help her patient, Ben. Then eventually, Caroline has to use that hoodoo magic to help herself too, which actually backfires because Violet uses the hoodoo to trade bodies with Caroline. Moments after that happens, it's revealed that Luke the lawyer used to be Ben. And it didn't stop there because Ben and Violet were originally Papa Justify and Mama Cecile. The film ends with the two young people in old bodies being carted away in ambulances. They're both considered senile, invalid, and ready to die. Whew. It's a really good movie in my opinion because it's not very gory, the concept was pretty fresh, it hadn't been done to death, and the little comments and attitudes in the movie naturally lead you to draw the wrong conclusion. So the reveal is genuinely surprising, or at least it was to me, but what is really interesting is that some of the hoodoo that this movie uses is real. I mean, the movie could have done literally anything under the sun and most of us wouldn't know the difference, but there are multiple instances of real spells being used in the film. For instance, ever wonder why old man Ben couldn't talk? I always thought it was because of that liquid concoction that Violet was always cramming down his throat, but that seems like she was only using that to paralyze Ben. However, remember when Caroline is in the attic and she finds that jar of what looks like an alien fetus that drops on the floor and ugh, everywhere? Well, after briefly looking into it, it turns out that that was a cow tongue with black thread in it. And if that's true, that means that that was the beef tongue spell, which prevents people from speaking out against you. Now, we don't see this happen when Caroline and Violet's body gets carted off, but we can assume that the same beef tongue spell was used for her too because she was perfectly able to speak when the body switching happened, yet she was dead silent once the ambulance drivers came in. Another real spell is the one that Caroline uses to untie Ben's tongue. And when Violet mentions that she puts brick dust around the house, which means no one wanting to do her harm can cross that line, suddenly Caroline finds herself unable to cross the property line with Ben. That, combined with the conjuration of Supreme Protection Symbol under Ben's bed, made it to where Caroline had to leave Ben on the property to get away. And it turns out even skeleton keys are a popular piece of hoodoo equipment. They can be used to unlock secrets or as a protective amulet. And that three-headed snake ring she sees is a real thing too! Those kind of rings were very popular in the 1920s, which also happened happened to be the last time Papa Justify was practicing. Really, the only part I can't figure out is the small drawing we see when the Thorpe party come in and find the children practicing magic. I don't know if it means anything or if it's just the doodling of a child, but it looks like there was some kind of supernatural intent going on there. So I'm open to your comments if anyone out there has a clue. The other thing I'm not positive about is what happened to the bodies of the two-headed doctors once they switched with the children. They're over there convulsing like they just had seizures while the kids look fine. It has to be some kind of trick though, right? We know from the movie that it takes time to prepare hoodoo magic, and you have to believe in it for the magical elements to work. So when Mama Cecile and Papa Justify switch bodies with the Thorpe children in the 1920s, that can't be the first time that those children were ever shown hoodoo. I would imagine, since Mama and Papa were shown to be the head servants of the house, that they would get special, unquestioned run of the place. They could put themselves in charge of Nanny and the children and thereby be able to dictate
disappear with them for hours at a time. Now imagine having two little kids and you're showing them these fun little things that you can do with magic. That builds and builds until the younglings wholeheartedly believe in hoodoo and they also don't see it as a scary threatening thing because their caretakers are there to keep them safe and present it in this fun happy way. Then one night your other mama and papa come in and say hey you want to see our new spell? They might even point blank say we can switch bodies for a little bit it'll be so much fun. And then as a child you willingly perform the very ritual that gets you murdered. That's why nobody at that party heard a disturbance. There wasn't one. Those children were not afraid until it was too late. And once Mama Cecile and Papa Justify got in those children's bodies, they gave those kids something to give them a seizure-like reaction so that there was no way that they could tell anyone what happened or even beg for help. I'm not positive what happened to the adult bodies of Mama and Papa, if there was a poisoning or it was a spell or what, but it was definitely something stronger than the beef tongue spell. And there was a distinct plan to make those two African-American servants look crazy and guilty, but still seem very much alive. I know, it seems so much simpler to just body switch and then kill them immediately after the transfer, but if the servants weren't alive, then the mob couldn't exact revenge and kill them. If people found two dead bodies instead, it would be suspicious. It may bring up questions of what the children saw or did, but if the people at the party got furious and offended and they off those two hoodoo doctors themselves, then everybody would know exactly what happened. The servants were caught teaching the children devil magic, so we had to kill them. And that's the facts. Or so they thought. What's interesting too is that by the look of the attic with all the dust and cobwebs, Mama Cecile and Papa Justify stopped practicing hoodoo once they transferred to the children's bodies. Now I understand staying silent until the children's parents die off, but these two were really special, well-respected hoodoo masters. And they still had followers even in modern times. So it seems really odd that hoodoo was such a huge part of their lives and they don't have any workable hoodoo area in the house. Well, I mean, other than what's required to switch bodies every 40 to 50 years. But aside from that, Mama and Papa really don't seem to be practicing major hoodoo anymore. They're just living quiet, curious lives alone out in the swamp. Are they afraid that everyone else would want to do their transfer spell too? Or do they feel like they topped out and they could never do anything better than switching bodies so they're just done? I don't get it. But I hope that this video has helped make the skeleton key a little more scary for you because it's all potentially real. I might be overthinking it, but I have referenced my sources in the description below. Well, family members, we're almost done, but I wanna invite you to hang out with me in some other places. I'm on Twitter and Instagram as my own personal self, and I have a Facebook page too, but I mostly just post photos over there. And sometimes people say, hey, McGann, I wanna mail you something. How do I do that? Easy, just click the About tab on my channel page and my most current P.O. Box info will be right there. I also run another channel, The Family. It's really a hodgepodge channel where we might post anything. Oh yeah, and I also sell shirts and stickers and stuff with The Family and The Fangirl logos. If that is your cup of tea, I have a link in every description of every video. Finally, if you want to help out The Fangirl channel and make sure I'm putting out video essays for years to come, the best way you can help is by subscribing and watching more of my videos whether they're new, old, whatever. Maybe even share one or two on social media, help spread the word. People who watch to the end of videos like you helps to tell the site, hey, this is a good video, we should recommend it to other people. So if you made it this far, leave me a comment of something like, hey, I made it to the end. Love ya, see ya next time, family.